Hello everyone, welcome to today's video on what is sliding window protocol at IntelliPath. Do you know friends, in the world of computer networks, efficient data transmission is a key to success. Imagine sending high data across vast distances where a packet can get lost, delayed or arrive out of order. How can we ensure that our data reaches its destination and intact in a timely manner? And that's where in sliding window protocol comes into the play. So today we are going to dive into this ingenious technique that has revolutionized the way data is transmitted to our networks. But before we move on and discuss more about what exactly is sliding window protocol, I request you guys that do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. So let's discuss our agenda for today's session. So we will start our session with what is sliding window protocol. Moving ahead, we will discuss about types of sliding window protocol. Then we will deep dive into differences between go back and ARQ and selective repeat ARQ. And at the end, we are going to conclude our session with a discussion on advantages of using sliding window protocol. So guys, let's start our session with what is sliding window protocol. So guys, sliding window protocol is a network communication technique that enhances data transmission, efficiency and reliability. It allows the sender to transmit multiple data packets without waiting for individual acknowledgements, thus maintaining a window of unacknowledged packets. As acknowledgements arrive from the receiver, the window slides forward, thus permitting more data to be sent. This dynamic adjustment optimizes network utilization and ensures data integrity. If a packet is lost or corrupted, then the receiver requests a retransmission, thus improving the reliability. The sliding window protocol is a crucial component of the modern network protocols, which enables faster, more efficient and orderly data transmission across the networks. So guys, let's move forward and understand the types of sliding window protocol. So guys, there are basically three types of sliding window protocol. The first one is go back and or GBN protocol. Next one is selective repeat protocol and third one is hybrid protocol. If I talk about go back and protocol, it is a simple and efficient protocol that operates with a sender and a receiver. The sender can transmit multiple packets before waiting for the acknowledgements and the receiver acknowledges correctly the received frames in sequential order thus allowing for cumulative acknowledgements. If the receiver detects a missing or corrupted frame, it discards all the subsequent frame until the missing one is received. Then the sender detects the missing acknowledgements and retransmits all of the unacknowledged frames from the missing one onward. GBN is a straightforward to implement and ideal for high speed error prone networks. The next one is selective repeat protocol. Selective repeat is a more complex protocol that also operates with the sender and receiver. The sender can transmit multiple frames before waiting for acknowledgements, just like GBN. However, the receiver individually acknowledges correctly received frames, not just the next one in sequence. If a frame is missing or corrupted, then the receiver requests retransmission only that specific frame, rather than discarding the subsequent one. The sender retransmits only the requested frame, SR is advantageous when the network conditions may lead to occasional frame errors such as it reduces unnecessary retransmission compared to GBN. If I talk about hybrid protocols, in practice, sliding window protocols can also be implemented as hybrids, thus combining features of both GBN and SR to suit specific network requirements. For instance, a protocol may use GBN for positive acknowledgements and SR for negative acknowledgements thus optimizing efficiency and reliability. Whereas if we take performance consideration, the choice between GBN and SR depends on factors like network error, bandwidth and the complexity of the implementation. GBN typically performs well in the low error environments and it is simpler to implement. SR is preferred more in the error prone networks as it minimizes the retransmission and maximizes the network utilization. In summary, sliding window protocol which includes go back n and selective repeat are essential components of data communication in computer networks. They ensure efficient and reliable data transmission by allowing multiple packets to be transmitted simultaneously while adapting to network condition and retransmitting only the necessary data, thus ultimately improving the overall performance of the network systems. Let me show you the example of the same. So guys, let's first discuss how the sliding window principle works. The sliding window mentions the criteria for several frames that can be sent until being acknowledged by the receiver. So first of all, the frames will get acknowledged even when the window is not filled upon the receiver side. 
Frames can be transferred from the sender side without the need to be filled up. The frames are numbered modulo n which signifies the size of the window. If n is the window size and the frames are numbered from 0 to n minus 1. The receiver also sends the number expected frames to receive along with an every acknowledgement. When an acknowledgement is sent with a number 8, then all of the 7 frames have been received and the 8th one is to be acknowledged. This concept of acknowledgement being sent is termed as piggybacking. Now let us look at certain things. What are the parameters in which sliding window depends on? First of all, the sender and the receiver side. Then it depends upon the window size. Then the total number of data frames that will be transmitted. And finally, proper sequencing of the frame. So suppose you can see in this diagram, we have around 1 to 8 frames. Okay. So as you can see guys here in this, so first frame is sent with including packets 0, 1 and 2. Okay. So it is directly sent to the receiver. Then what happens, the window shifts which includes the frame as 1, 2 and 3 and then it shares the frame. Whereas the receiver on receiving the frames 0, 1 and 2, it will send an acknowledgement for the same to the sender. So as you can see in a frame, there are three elements. So our window size becomes three. Okay. So this tells us how the sliding window works. Now let's move on and understand about go back and ARQ protocol. So this protocol is also known as go back and automatic repeat request. It is a data link layer protocol which uses a sliding window method. In this, if any frame is corrupted or lost, all the subsequent frames have to be sent again. The size of the sender window is n in this protocol. For example, in go back 8, the size of the sender window will be 8 and the receiver window size will always be 1. If the receiver receives a corrupted frame, it cancels it and the receiver does not accept any corrupted frame. When the timer expires, the sender sends back the correct frame and the design of the go back and ARQ protocol is something like this. So as you can see, here is a sender. It is first out sending, okay? And here in the network layer, we have the data. In the data link layer, all these things are shared. In the physical layer, we receive the frame and also send the frame. So as you can see, the packets flowing all over here. Same goes on the receiver side where you have to deliver the data, okay? On the network layer, then on the data link layer, okay? These process intercommunicate and finally, at physical layer, it is received and the same is sent vice versa. So this is all about here. So here is a data frame where the sequence number is there and here is acknowledgement frame, okay? With a proper acknowledgement number. Now let's see how this event happens. So what happens first of all, an event comes up to the sender which requests from the network layer. So inside this, there is an algorithm for the sender and the timeout is set for every frame to be received by the receiver. Now, the notification comes from the physical layer. If the event has happened, means the request has been sent successfully. Now, when we see on the receiver end side, we can see that this event happens in the physical layer. And as you can see on the receiver end, we have an algorithm for the receiver side. Now, let us see how this event happens. So, consider this our packet with numbered from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now what will happen, first the frame 0 is going to go, which is going to include these three numbers. Okay. So it will send the acknowledgement number for the frame 0 and with the acknowledged number as 1. Then the same, you can see the next frame 1 is given and if the given frame is sent to the receiver side and so as you can see guys, our acknowledgement 2 is lost. So we will be resending the frame 3. And we are going to receive the corresponding acknowledgement for the same labeled as 3. And finally, we are going to receive the acknowledgement 4 for the frame 3. So this is a cumulative technique where we are receiving corresponding acknowledgements for our corresponding frames. Now let's move on to our next protocol that is selective repeat. So as you know guys, selective repeat ARQ is also known as selective repeat automatic repeat request. It is a data link layer protocol that uses a sliding window method. The go back and ARQ protocol works well if it has fewer errors. But if there is lot of error in the frame, then lots of bandwidth loss in the sending the frames again. So we use the selective repeat ARQ protocol. In this protocol, the size of the sender window is always equal to the size of the receiver window. 
the size of the sliding window is always greater than 1. If the receiver receives a corrupt frame, it does not directly discard it. It sends a negative acknowledgement to the sender. Then the sender sends that frame again as soon as on receiving the negative acknowledgement. There is no waiting for any timeout to send that frame. The design of the selective repeat ARQ protocol is something like this. As you know guys, in this example, suppose our timer has start all over here with the frame 0. So as you can see, sender A sends the frame 0 to the receiver and here you can see what are the elements included. So A is going to receive these 0, 1, 2 and 3. These are all the elements he is going to receive. Now what will happen is going to send the corresponding acknowledgement. Now guys, we can see that while sending the frame 1, okay, which involves number 1, 2 and 3. Okay, these are the corresponding number which includes the next frame. So whenever we are sending the frame 1 and suppose a hypothetical situation where we lost our frame 1. So what will happen all over here guys? So it's going to resend the frame 1 with the next name as frame 2. And the packets included would be 1, 2, 3 and 4. So this is going to be received all over here. Then what will happen guys? Then the frame 3 will be sent and it's going to send a negative acknowledgement since that wasn't received. So next of all, what will happen guys? So frame 1 is going to be resended since we didn't receive this frame. So we can see guys that frame 1 has been resended. Then we get the acknowledgement for the same frame 1. This is how it works and as you can see how the timer is there. The timer started from 1, okay. It went on till the arrival of the frame 1. Then the next timer is going to start from the next end which is at this. Then the third primer is going to start from this frame. So this was all about selective repeat ARQ protocol. Now let's move on guys and understand the difference between GBN and SR protocol. So guys we know that in the GBN protocol we have the high error rate. So this scenario happens okay. So if it has a high error rate it wastes a lot of bandwidth. Whereas if I talk about the SR protocol there is a loss of low bandwidth. Then GBN protocol is less complex and SR protocol you can see it is kind of bit more complex because it has to do sorting and searching as well and it also requires more storage. Whereas if we talk about our GBN protocol it does not require searching or sorting. Whereas we see that sorting is done to get the frames in the correct order in SR protocol. Whereas the search operation is also performed in this SR protocol. We can see in the GBN protocol it is used more whereas SR protocol it is kind of used less. So this was somewhat difference between GBN protocol and SR protocol. Now let's move on and understand the advantages of using sliding window protocol. So guys sliding window protocol is a critical component of data communication in the computer networks which offers several advantages that enhance the efficiency and reliability of data transmission. Here are some of the key advantages of sliding window protocol. The first one is efficient utilization of network resources. One of the primary advantages of using sliding window protocol is its ability to efficiently use network bandwidth. It allows the sender to transmit multiple data packets before waiting for acknowledgements, thus ensuring that network is consistently occupied with data, thus reducing the idle time. The next one is there is reduced latency. By enabling the sender to transmit multiple packets before waiting for acknowledgements, sliding window protocol reduces the round trip time latency in data transmission. This leads to faster data delivery, especially in situations where latency is critical such as real-time communication or multimedia streaming. The third one is it has optimized through output. Sliding window protocol optimizes network through output by maintaining a balance between number of packets in transit and network capacity. It helps to prevent overloading the network while keeping it sufficiently busy and achieving higher data transfer rates. We get improved error handling because of these things. The protocol incorporates mechanisms for detecting and recovering from lost or corrupted packets. When the error occurs, the protocol can quickly request retransmission of only the affected packets, thus reducing unnecessary retransmission and minimizing the impact of errors on overall data through output. Finally, we get an enhanced network efficiency. So sliding window protocol contributes to the overall network efficiency by reducing the chances of congestion and packet collisions. 
It helps to manage network traffic, ensuring that the data is transmitted in an orderly and non-destructive manner. So guys, that was all for today's video. I hope so, you would have enjoyed our today's video on what is sliding window protocol. Just a quick info guys, Intellipath offers advanced certification in cybersecurity by E and ICT IIT Guwahati. The advanced certification in cybersecurity program aims to help you gain expertise and knowledge in cybersecurity. The IIT Guwahati faculties will help you cover all the required cybersecurity skills such as cryptography, ethical hacking, application securities, etc. Also, you will get to master tools such as Linux, SQL, Nikto and Microsoft Baseline. With all these courses, we have already had thousands of professionals in successful career transition. You can check out the testimonial on our Achievers channel whose link is given below in the description. Without a doubt, this course can set your careers to great heights. So visit our course page. Repeat. So visit our course page on the link given below in the description. Take your first step towards the career growth in the field of cybersecurity.